So I want to ask you a question. Are your stocks crashing or is there a particular stock in your portfolio that is crashing so hard that you don't even know when a dip is going to come or it's coming to an end? So this is the video you actually need. So in this video, I'm going to show you things to do when your stock is crashing and then how to avoid panic. So at the end of the day, you will see the strategies to manage a stock dip, know which one to buy on dip and then bounce back stronger. And then there was going to be an action point on what to do when your stock is actually crashing. So this is a practical video. This is a, this is a guide that will help you manage your emotion. You know, stock dip is not a new thing for me. I've experienced deep, deeper and deepest dip on a stock. And eventually I was able to hold through until the stock recovered. Or maybe at the end of the day, I sold at break even without losing, or I end up selling this, this stock for massive profits. Now, one of the stocks that had actually given me this kind of experience, or that I've had this kind of experience uh, was PZ, it was PZ. I just want to look for something reset. Now, when I recommended PZ um, early 2023, around this region here. Now, in short, my recommendation on PZ started at 12 Naira. It was 12 Naira, at 12 Naira. That was where I recommended PZ, 12 Naira. Now, PZ did not just move um, at, from 12 Naira to where it is. What happened? The following week, PZ dipped by 3%. In short, in the next one, one month plus, PZ went from 12 Naira down to a low of almost... Um, nine to ten naira that's almost 20 something percent loss in almost one two three four five in almost like five weeks that's like one month plus but did i sell pz out of panic did i rush in to say oh pz is going down let me quickly sell i'm scared i don't want to lose my money no i didn't do that i held on to pz why because i have a checklist that i'm about to share with you this checklist will help you stay put on the stock this checklist will help you hold on to a stock, even in the midst of deep. And then by the time you run your checklist and you're able to see that nothing is happening to this company, this company is okay, everything is intact, then you buy on deep. Why? Because you want to quickly take advantage of low price to reduce your average cost. By the time the stock bounces back, in short, you are going to come out stronger. You know, some deep are not necessarily that the company is bad. That's one thing you need to find out. You know, people are so driven by emotion that whenever they see a dip, they are just scared. They want to quickly sell. There are market dips that are driven by the need for cash. Very simple. Now, there are some mutual funds or invest investors that want to rebalance their portfolio. And in the process of rebalancing, they are selling some to buy some. Now, when they are selling some stock, it's not necessarily that the stock is bad, but maybe they are trying to take profit or maybe because they want to uh, uh, rebalance their portfolio to align with their uh, policy or their capital allocation policy. So they feel that, oh, this particular stock has more capital than others. So let's see how to rebalance it and ensure that we play around our capital allocation policy. You understand? Now, some deep can also be driven by market events. So there are deep that are worth waiting for. There are deep that when they come, you buy more. There are deep that are good for averaging down. And there are also deep that requires you to stay off the stock completely, cut your loss and move on. So how do I know when a dip is one that requires me to walk away? And how do I know a dip that needs me to buy more? Or how do I know a dip that might just require me to just ignore what is happening or close my system and then stay off the market pending when the whole thing will settle and then I would continue to see my stock. I will see my stock go in line with the direction that Elia expected. These are the things that I'm going to share in this video course. Now, let's look at the next slide, understanding market volatility. So I think you need to note this part. I think you need to put this into consideration that market volatility is the single reason you make or lose money. That's the point. Market volatility is the reason. So if you had made money in the stock market, it was because the stock was volatile. If you had lose money in the market, it was also because the stock was volatile because volatility, volatility talks about up and down movement. If the stock doesn't go up, who make money if it doesn't come down? So you need to accept and come to terms with market volatility. So like I said here, volatility is the single reason you make or lose money. So you need it. 
but in the right way. You need volatility. You can't just buy a stock and then in your head, you're thinking, oh, I don't want to, I don't want this stock to be volatile. And then for the next three or four months, this stock is just uh, stagnant. You won't make money, you will lose money. So what's the essence of being in the market? So you need to welcome volatility. Now, my number one secret to turn volatility into opportunity is patience. That means when volatility comes, exercise patience. When volatility comes, learn to absorb it, especially after watching this video that I'm going to share, uh, after watching the, uh, the insights that I'm going to share in this particular video. So, so let's look at what you need to hold yourself, what you need to control emotion, what you need to decide on whether to stay out of the company completely or i more on deep. See it as opportunity. So here are the checks to carry out when your stocks are crashing. When your stock are on deep, in short, when you're losing 15, 20%, these are the things you need to do. Now, there are stocks in my portfolio that are down. Example of one of them is Jai's Bank. Example of one stock is Jai's Bank. Look at Jai's Bank. I recommend Jai's Bank, and then you can see Jai's Bank immediately deep. Now, I have another stock that is also down in my portfolio, which is UCAP. Giants Bank is down, UCAP is down. So the question is, should I sell this stock and walk away? Or should I buy more? These are questions that I would answer in this particular video guide. But I will play more emphasis on Giants Bank. Sorry, I'll talk of UCAP, I mean UCAP. Most of the conversation that I'll be having will be more uh, with my community members. Because I'll be having a section with them uh, next month. Yes, we host monthly webinars. So section next month. So that's where I will talk about all of that stocks that we have bought. But let me pick you for the purpose of this education, uh, educating you and also ensuring that you control your emotions. So we're going to work with you cap stock. If you want to learn more about my take in, on other stocks that I've recommended, join the community. I'll be discussing that next month in our webinar. That's next month, May. So, but here we're going to look at what UCAP specifically. Now, look at UCAP. I bought UCAP at 24 Naira, around 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 24, 22, 23, 24, thereabouts. Now, look at what happened. The following week, UCAP dipped by 0.65%, followed by 13%, and then we're seeing 11 percent and now UCAP is selling for almost 16 to 17. Now the question is, should I sell UCAP? Now I'm down by almost 20 percent plus in the market. Am I am I am I scared? Do you understand? Am I allowing my emotion to control me? Am I probably looking to sell just to quickly take my money out of the market because I think this company was scared? I don't take decision like that. Not so fast. There are things I look at before I decide on whether UCAP is a sell or I should buy more average down at the bottom of the market. So let's look at the things you must answer. Let's look at the question that I'm going to ask you right now. The first question is, why did you buy the stock? Why did you buy the stock? You know, you don't just go to the stock market and start picking random stocks and say, oh, I like uh, Zenith Bank, I like Nestle, I like this, I like that, and then you're buying them. No, you don't buy stock like that. You need to answer this question. Did you buy the stock for trading or investing? Did you buy it for trading or investing? If you bought the stock for trading, then it means you plan to hold the stock for a short term. Now, the question is, what is our definition of a short term? For me, any stock I'm buying for trading, my minimum holding period on that stock is three months. Any stock I am holding for trading, my minimum period is what? Short term, uh, three months, I mean. Now, if I'm buying a stock for investing, in short, I don't even need to bother about myself at all because as long as the factors that will continue to uh, generate my dividend is still uh, very visible on the company stock, then there's no need for me to panic. But for trading, this stock is down by 20%. 20% is quite significant. But then, am I bothered Am I looking to sell? Are there things I'm watching out for? Are there reasons why I've not issued a sell order or try to take my money out of the market and run out of panic? So, one, I bought UCAP for trading. And my minimum holding period is three months. Now, how long have I been holding UCAP? It's just three, two, three weeks. I've not held UCAP for almost a month. That means I still have like two months more to go. So first and foremost, you need to ask that, yourself that question. So I've not held UCAP for three months. There are stocks that I bought. 
Now, in the course of holding them for like the first week, second week, they will go down. But because I plan to hold them for three months, because of that period, the stock will recover, clear the previous resistance, and then reach a new high. So volatility is good if you can turn it into an opportunity. And those are the things I want to share. Now, the second most important question is, did it take your boxes, your check boxes before you bought? Is you don't want to buy a stock as a gambler. You know, it's only a gambler, it's only a gambler that will be panicking, that will be concerned. You're worried, you're having sleepless nights because your stock is down by 20%. You know, you need to ask yourself, did it tick all my boxes? When I bought UCAP, I looked at the three key things that I watch out for in the stock market. First one is economic events. Second one is technical factor. Then final one is fundamental. Do you understand? So if a stock six this checklist then it means that i did not gamble it means i followed my standard trading strategy i followed my standard buy signal before i said this stock is a buy so i didn't follow the gambler's model by random picking that stock it was a stock that followed due diligence due process and then understanding the fact that market is volatile made me to be unperturbed i'm not worried so that is the question you must ask yourself. Did you buy this stock for trading or investing? Did it tick your check boxes? That means when you said, I want to buy you cap, what exactly did you see? When you run a check, what exactly did you check? Is it in line with your model? Those are the things you do when you are buying a stock. So that when it crashes, first and foremost, you have to go back to you, like going back to your drawing board to say, okay, why did I buy this stock? I bought this stock because of this, because of that, because of this, because of that. Fine. And if you have a strategy that has generated more winnings for you in the stock market than losses, then you shouldn't be bothered. Shouldn't be bothered. Especially when you have experience of similar stock play out in the past where you bought and then it dipped in, 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 in the next three to four weeks and suddenly it picked up, just like I shared on the PZ. PZ had moved from that low price of 10 naira after dropping to 12 naira, dropping from 12 to 10 you can see how pizza recovered to clear resistance and then reached a new high so those are the things you watch out for when you are buying a stock you need to ask yourself why you bought that stock so why did i buy you cap i bought you cap for trading number one number two is that you have ticked all my three check boxes before I decide to buy. So should I be worried that I bought UCAP? No, I shouldn't be worried. So first thing is UCAP actually passed this first checklist. So I didn't buy out of uh, emotion. I didn't buy it as a, gam as a stock I want to gamble or as a random pick. I bought it by following a detailed uh, step or detailed guide. So that's the first thing you ask yourself and you must provide answers to this question if you miss it out you don't have a reason why you bought the stock then it means you're a gambler so this already alone will tell you whether you gambled or not now the second question is why is the stock crashing yes i bought the stock for trading fine this stock ticked all my check boxes you know this stock is benefiting from economic events this stock has good fundamentals it's short from technical check i felt this stock will go up so why is the stock crashing? This is also another important question you need to ask yourself because knowing why the stock is crashing to a very large extent would help you know whether this dip is going to be a huge dip or not, or it's a dip you should be worried about. Now, there are company-specific news that may be responsible for a stock crash. Now, is UCAP crashing because there is a major news, there's a major announcement. You know, if you take a manufacturing company, for instance, or a healthcare stock, when a stock recalls its products from the market, maybe one of its products failed, one of its products is actually um, having a side, uh, actually um, comes with a side effect, or you see Tesla recalling cars. You know? So when you see those kind of news, they tend to affect the company's stock. These are company-specific news. Sometimes it can even be a, a news that relates with management, mismanagement of the company, fraudulent cases, issues with regulatory authorities. You know, So if you find out that there's a company-specific news, then that may be a reason why the stock is crashing. So how do I know whether there's a company-specific news on UCAP? What I do is I'll type UCAP PLC right here. I'll go to Google UCAP PLC, then search news. Now, when I search news, I can then drill down to dates. So I'll go to recent, i say for the past one month, 
So show me all the news on UCAP for the past one month. Now, four weeks ago, UCAP increases gross earnings. Um, Nigerian stocks list of dividends, okay? UCAP report. So in the last one month, there is no company-specific news that might be responsible for UCAP deep. So you need to know why there's a new that is specific to that company. Secondly, are there breaking news? You know, there could be breaking news nationwide or breaking news that might just affect investors' perception about stock. Maybe breaking news around the economy, insecurity, crisis. You know, when there are breaking news like that, it tends to affect investors' perception or sentiment towards a company's stock. And so it could even be sector. Is the sector suffering? Well, which sector is this company is? UCAP is in the finance and investment sector. So is there anything happening in finance and investment sector that may not be favorable for companies in that sector? Oh, there is one major thing that I know that could be responsible for either uh, uptick in finance sector or that, and that's interest rates and also CBR regulatory policies. There are CBR, CBR regulatory policies or circular that could just in short, shatter banking stocks and other finance stocks. There are also CBM policies that would make stock go high. But I know of one, which is interest rates. And right now, CBN has been increasing interest rates. In the last two MPC meetings, they have increased interest rates twice. And I know that increasing interest rates tends to be um, positive for finance stock, insurance companies, even banks, because banks are going to make money when they lend. Finance stocks are going to make money when they put their money in fixed income market, like treasury bills, bonds, commercial paper. And then, you know, you just wrap your heads around it. Uh, for now, I don't see, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any, or is it exchange rates? So try to find out if there's sector specific news that might be responsible for that crash. And also, are there government policies? I think the government policy that is responsible for such crash, government can come up with one policy that will just shake or shatter the market or shatter a certain sector. So you need to also look at that and ask yourself. So if you can't find any right here, we can't find any company-specific news as regards to UCAP. We can't find any breaking news that we think, at least from to our, to our, our best knowledge, that it will be responsible for such deep. And then is the, comp is the stock suffering, sector stock suffering? Sorry. Now, here we're looking at the sector itself. Or is it a normal pullback? You're looking at sector. Okay, is finance sector suffering? I don't think so. Now, is are there government policies that are might probably affect you? Cap. These are the reasons why you need to follow um uh headlines or follow a site like Business Day. These guys are, are good. They have done a great job in bringing uh me up to speed with events in the market. So you can probably uh use them as one. Uh, platform that you can follow or you can always track their news and I can even subscribe to get updates whenever they post new information as regards uh, business and economy. So when you look at all these things, you see that we, I can't find, as far as I'm concerned, I can't find any company specific news. I can't find any breaking news. I can't find any sectoral. In short, the sectoral event that is playing out should also to be beneficial. I will, tell you, I will tell you more about this when we get to the next uh, line. Are there any government policies that don't go that's, that is actually affecting the stock and also making the stock take this big hit? None for now. Fine, I'm okay. So you can see the first reason is fine. Second reason is okay. Can't find any. Fine. When I'm looking at that, you notice that my emotion, my confidence level is increasing. In short, I'm even taking a deeper breath. I'm no longer scared. And then I'm no longer panicking again because of it. Now, the next one, the third one, is, is the fundamentals intact. This is extremely important. Is the fundamentals intact? So did the company just report its worst results? Let's look at UCAP stock to answer that question. So I'm going to the Nigeria Stock Exchange website right now, and then I'm trying to look at um, UCAP financials. Let's look at UCAP recently released results. Even though we have seen right here that UCAP reports 6.4 billion turnover in Q1. So let's look at the numbers. Let's be sure that these guys um, are not uh, suffering because of the financial. So UCAP has just released its Q1 results. You can see here, uh, 31st December, 31st of March, sorry, 2024. So I'm looking at the, the Q1 number. Let's see if there's anything that might probably um, be driving that deep. Now look at Q, Q1 number. Now, Q1 2023, 
was 5.3. Gross earnings increased from 5.3 to 6.1. And then when you look at the breakdown of this gross, uh, this particular uh, number, you will see that we have um, if net operating income and then other income, dividend income and everything. So let's look at the breakdown of this operating income. Investment income dipped from 2.7 to 1, note 4. Now, this is a major line item on UCAP Financial. So I need to pay attention to this part. The net fees and commission increased from 1.8 to 2.5, which is okay. Net trading income, 396 to 690. So the only dip that was recorded right here was uh, is investment income from 2.7 to 1. So what could have been responsible for that? Now, if you look at the other item, like total revenue up 5.3 to 6.1, uh, look at... Um, Expenses, it was able to manage down from 2.6 to 2.2. Profit before tax from 2.8 to 4. Very good. And then profit for the year, 2.4 to 3.5. That's almost 46%. Now, with this increase, I think the fundamentals are okay in tax. But then I need to look at the breakdown of this investment income. Let me know why there was a dip from 2.7 to 1 billion. So here, I will go down to note 4. So let's search note 4 on UCAP financials note four note four yes this is note four a breakdown of note four now you see that you can reported an interest from placement and bonds you can see a increase from 634 m to 4.8 billion which is massive now i could tell you categorically i can tell you categorically that the increase in this is tied to Exchange rate, which is sorry, interest income. I mean, which is a major event that is driving finance and banking stock. So you shouldn't be surprised that UCAP is reporting this higher number. Why? Because CBN in the last two monetary policy meetings have increased interest rates. And interest rate is a yardstick. That's the parameter that is used or that determines other rates. So meaning if the government is going to issue another bond treasury bill, then expect the rate to be a lot more higher. Do you understand? Now, recent ones have probably touched. 15%, 18%, to even 20%. So meaning it's like a free money. Any 20% from such kind of risk-free assets is very attractive. Now, look at dividends uh, from income from security, investment securities from 1.6 to 35. Then profit on disposal. Now, at the end of the day, you will see where the major problem is. Income from managed funds. These guys actually manage funds. They run a managed funds business. Managed funds basically is on behalf of their maybe high net worth clients. Now, they generated 9.6 in Q1 2023, and then in Q4, it increased to 10.6, which is okay. But here, the direct cost of running that business is actually a red sign for me. 10.3 was paid out as against 9. That was end. That's negative. Now, in 2024, 14 was paid out it's against 10. That's almost 40% increase. This is not good. This is what actually, this is the reason um, net operating income dipped from 2.7 down to 1. So this is a red sign for me. And I think UCAP needs to look into this. So if UCAP is able to grow its interest income from placements from 634 million to 48.8 billion, and is not able to translate that into sizable profits, do you understand? At the operating level, then it has a problem to deal with. Either it shuts down this managed fund so that this number will be a lot more higher because you can't get this kind of return and then pay a lighter portion to your um, high net worth individual. So they need to look into this part. The question is, is that what is responsible? Is that the reason UCAP stock is down? No, it is not because overall the financials are okay. From top to down, they are fine. I'm only pointing out specific areas that we need to pay attention to. Now, this will not make me to be vigilant. This will not make me to be curious as to what Q2 2024 will be like. Meaning, if they don't control this line item, if they don't control this line item, this might be a problem. This might help, this might pressure their earnings. This might put a lot of pressure on their top line. Now, imagine that UCAP did not grow its interest from placement and bond to 4.8. It means UCAP might even report a lesser profit, if not loss at the operating level. So 
this is very important. This is a red sign to watch out for. But then my verdict is that the financials are okay. So I won't say that is the reason, reason your cap stock is down. Now, our revenue is expected to dip significantly. Now, this now leads me to the next point. Now, look at the challenge I've noticed right here, how the company's direct cost of running the managed fund business uh, is increasing from 10 billion in 2023 Q1 to that's almost 40% increase. If these guys don't address this, this might be a problem going forward. And then that means it might actually lead to a dip in revenue. So why I'm not saying that the new cap will experience a dip because of rising interest rate or the fact that interest is elevated, I think this is a red sign to watch out for. So I'm curious right now. Now, I would say that my answer to, to a large extent is missed. Missed being that with the interest rates being with interest rate at high level, I think it would help support you cap fine. And with that managed fund operation, managed fund that is telling on its direct cost, that return, that revenue might be a little bit pressured. So I am watchful. I am watching. I am watching that line item. So I've never been expected to dip significantly. Maybe I could say yes, but not that extent. So here I'm watching you cap to know whether this is the cause of that deal. Now, did the company dilute earnings via rights issue or new issue? No. When a company issues new shares, price tends to dip. Why? Because the earnings per share at the end of the day will go down. Earnings per share is the earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders. So if you look at this, what is my verdict here? UCAP fundamentals are okay. There's no problem with UCAP. And then I don't think we have any cause for concern. Why? Because if you look at bottom line figure, it went up by 46%. So that's also good. At least UCAP is able to generate revenue from other sources, which helps to boost its bottom line. So that is also okay. So first one, fine. Second one, fine. Third one, fine. Now, what is the fourth one? Did you buy at the top of the market? That is also another important question you need to ask yourself. When we bought UCAP, did you buy at the top of the market or the bottom of the market? Now, look at UCAP charts here. You'll notice one thing, and I want to tell you where we are right now. You see wave up, wave down. You know, I talked about market volatility and how volatility... Um, can be turned to opportunity and volatility is the reason why you either make money or lose because when you when you see a stock price go up you make money when it comes down you lose money so here you need to find a way to manage volatility so you see with up with down with up right here with down with up with down can you see with up with down with up with down with up with down with up so we're here is with down so that means we are actually buying UCAP during its wave down. That means UCAP is looking to complete its wave down before we can see the next leg. So where is UCAP right now? UCAP is actually in the process of completing a wave down pattern in the market. Once it completes a wave down pattern, because the stock cannot go up forever or go down forever, there will most likely be a wave up pattern, which is the next projection wave up. Now, if we look at UCAP again, look at where we're buying UCAP. We bought UCAP at 24, right? Now, I bought it because UCAP dipped down here. So this is like a major key level that had been tested as resistance in September 2023 and then um, tested right here too in January 2023. So this is touch here touch here and then before we see a, a final breakout. So it looks like UCAP has retraced back to previous resistance, now torn support. So right now, UCAP is actually selling at my at the bottom of the market. So let me call it the bottom of the market, which is where price may likely recover from. So this area is a major key level. This area is considered bottom because price had actually acted around this region when it was a resistance, one, two. So we're expecting price to react again, either as support. But then if price breaks out of this to the downside, now that's where fear will set in. So right now, I'm not, fear, I'm not fearful. I'm not looking to sell because UCAP is selling at major key level right here. So are we looking to complete a wave down pattern? If this stock completes a wave down pattern, the next thing that will follow is wave up. You can see here, the next thing that will follow is wave up. You can see wave down, wave up, but it won't happen overnight. So we might see some level of volatility right here. 
because this is going to be considered a major region, a major key level. So we might see a lot of volatility going up around here. So did we buy UCAP at the top? No, we didn't buy UCAP because of FOMO. Do you understand? Did the price reject a major key level resistance? You know, imagine that you have bought UCAP at 27 at this key level. Now, this would have been a problem. Why? Because you bought at a level where your downside risk is very, very high. So I bought UCAP when it bounced off the 20 days moving average. You can see here. I bought it when it bounced off the 20 days moving average. So, but here we're seeing a dip, but the stock has not dipped below my major key level right here. So that's why I'm still holding on to you can even though I'm down by 20%. But where it is right now, it's a major key level. Key level. What if I said? And the stock starts rising again. So it's only when the stock breaks down below this support region that's where I'll say, Oh, it's time for me to say goodbye because this stock might be going down for at least the next three, four, five, six months. So this is where I am right now in the market. I am watching the bottom section right here because this is where I think the turning point should probably happen after a major sell-off. Now, some of the things that are responsible for this sell-off are the fact that the stock went into SDIV, yes, SDIV, number one. Number two is that uh, investors that bought because of dividend might actually be selling their stock. Why? Because there's no dividend payments, there's no dividend coming soon, except uh, in 2025. So most people that have bought into the stock for dividends, they might have sold, hoping that in 2025, they'll be coming in again to ride the stock to the uptrend. Now, does it mean the stock will not rally again? No. If demand is more than supply, why will the stock pick up? It will definitely pick up. And if this company continue to report higher numbers, maybe in Q2, then we should see you cap continue its uptrend. So is the price far or close to the bottom? It's just as exactly like I said before, the stock is close to the bottom. When the stock is close to the bottom, then there's no need to panic because there might be a reversal coming very, very soon. In short, that's even the best time to watch the stock right now because if I see any reversal right now that this stock is reversing to the uptrend, I will buy more to average down. Can you see right here? I'm not averaging down. I'm not telling you to buy now because it's down. I'm buying, I'm telling you to watch. Now, once I see a sign of recovery from here, I like to average down on a stock that is recovering from the bottom because if you try to predict the bottom, it's a risk you might lose money. So we've answered that. We didn't buy at the top. We bought close to the bottom. Right now, the stock is at the bottom. If you cap is still at the top, that would have been a huge risk. Now, my next question, is the price overvalued? You know, in one of my video courses, on coachoge.com platform, I talked about how you can value Nigerian stock. Now, this video course will help you understand valuation, especially for trader. You, you, you it would help you estimate the fair value of every stock you buy. You know, it's good for you to know the fair value of a stock before you hit the buy button. So, this is also important. Are we buying you cap at a price that is higher than its fair value? Some of the real things that drive fair value is the current discount rate in the market. You know, as CBN continues to raise rates, it means the valuation for stock will definitely go down because you're going to use a higher number and then a higher discount rate. So is this why the stock is going down? This might partly be the reason why the stock is going down because it might be fairly overvalued at that rate. But I won't say that is totally the reason because I will need to hire out fair valuation on new cap. And when I do that, I will definitely post it in the group. Now, is CBN raising interest rate to attract hot money? Yes. CBN is raising rates, meaning that some people might even be selling. That might be another reason. Some might be selling their UCAP to move the money into fixed income markets. And then they would think that UCAP is a bit overvalued. Why would I put my money in a stock when I can do the same thing in Treasury B and collect 20% upfront? When stock is subject to volatility and I'm going to lose my capital and then Treasury B is giving me my money back at the end of one year. You notice that the reason people tend to move their money away from stock market into the fixed income, and then it, it tends to affect the valuation of that stock. So this might be partly one reason why UCAP might be down, but I won't say it's entirely the reason because UCAP has just paid dividends. So it's likely that the stock went to SDIV and then people are selling, uh, actually dividend investors are selling uh, the stock. So, and then maybe the stock was even marked down too. So a lot of things actually uh, accounting for why that dip is happening. But then it's not a fundamental reason. It's not a critical reason 
that will probably make me to run away from that stock because for now there is no major news affecting that stock. Now we've talked about the reasons or things you should do. One is why did you buy the stock? Number one. Two is why is the stock crashing? Three is is the stock in fundamentals intact? Four is did you buy at the top? And then five is whether the stock is overvalued. If the stock is overvalued, then the market might try to reprice the stock around its fair value. And sometimes fair value might actually be around the key level right here. So I am watching you cap at this major price level right now. So that is why I am not selling because this major key level might lead, might, might precede a major turning point going forward. And then knowing fully well that the sector where the company is, is benefiting from a major trend number one. And then again, if we look at the fact that the company recent fundamentals are okay, except the issue that I pointed out, then there should be no reason why I should panic because I've done this before. I've bought a stock that went down and eventually recovered. So it is not a new thing for me in the stock market. The stock will always dip, but then you need to learn how to manage your emotion. You need to know when to say goodbye to the stock based on this event. Now, all this thing will lead us to three things. We're going to take one of these action points. One is you rather cut your loss to buy back later. That is, if there is a fundamental issue with the company, if there's a company specific news or if there are policies that might be responsible for that crash. And again, if the stock is crashing from the bottom, then you might probably need to sell from the top, sorry, then you might have to sell to cut back your loss and then buy back later. Or you could even average down. If you look at all these checklists from top to bottom, no bad news. The company financial is intact. The company is benefiting from sector events. And then why is the sell-off? Maybe people are taking profits. Maybe people are reshuffling or the balancing that portfolio to move money to the fixed income market. That's why you're seeing that deal. Now, if there's nothing wrong with that company, then why can't you average down? For me, this is what I'm actually looking to do once I see a sign of confirmed recovery from that price so that I can reduce my cost significantly. And then you can even do nothing and let the market reward you. Meaning if you don't plan to buy later, maybe your capital location is equal, you might just ignore and move on. Knowing fully well that a stock will always go through volatility. Volatility is when a stock goes up and comes down. So maybe within this period, the market is trying to find the balance on its way down. But later on, when this is completed, what happens? It goes up because the stock will always move in wave up, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, down, wave up, wave down. Now, once you complete this wave down pattern, what happens? It goes up. So these are the things you watch out for before you decide on whether to say goodbye to a stock or not, or start panicking. When you go through this, it will help you control your emotion. It will help you avoid panic in the market and also help you take informed decision on whether the stock is a sell or a hold. So I hope I have been able to answer your question on what to do when your stocks are crashing. And I think this is a video you should keep and hold very well because when you see more of your stock crashes in the future, you might probably need to bookmark this to watch and over and over again to help you know whether to sell the stock or average down. If this is the first time you're watching this channel, kindly hit the subscription button Turn on the notification bell so that when I release more videos like this, you would be notified on what you do.